G'day guys and welcome to my channel. Sorry it's been so long since I last posted. Uh, I've actually had a week off of doing pretty much anything that last week while I was in Florida. Two major reasons. Firstly, it was just a really busy time. And secondly, uh, while I was in Mexico, I actually got some water in my system and it took me down. I, I was completely sick for the last for the last seven, eight days. Um, I wasn't feeling great in the gut. I was passing through a lot of water and I wasn't really having a lot of digestion occurring. So I haven't been doing any exercise for the last couple of weeks. And you know, that's, that's not great. That's what I try to do is while I'm traveling, I do travel frequently for work. I try to always keep my workout schedule consistent. Um, but at the end of the day, when you're feeling that sick and you're just not absorbing any nutrients in the body, it's best not to be working out at the gym. So I have taken the time off. It's also prevented me from posting. I did want to get this particular video up a little bit earlier. Uh, now I'm back in Melbourne for a few days at least. So I thought I'd get this one together. This is sort of something I promised because I've had a lot of feedback on the channel. Um, some questions, people who have experienced some brachial neuritis. And I thought I'd just give a bit of an in-depth overview of my uh, particular encounter with this disease or this disorder and you know the story that leads up to it occurring and where I'm at today so um, again thanks thanks for watching thanks for subscribing for those who have keep the comments coming uh, and I'll, I'll continue trying to provide some good content and feedback to my experience with brachial neuritis or Parsonage Turner syndrome so a brief history of my sports and injuries which are thought to have contributed um, I've always been very athletic and a sporty kind of guy, so I was often the fastest amongst, you know, my friends uh, in my school and a very, very athletic kid. So in my younger teenage years, I was heavily involved with track and field and particularly good at sprinting, high jump and long jump. So things that required power from the legs, I, I had that in spades. At about 14 or 15, my focus shifted to ice hockey, which has been my main sport into my mid-20s. It's an unusual sport for an Australian to play, and really to get better, it was important for kids like me to spend time in northern countries. Um, I, was, I was fortunate enough to represent my state and country on multiple occasions as a junior. And as an adult, I took up uh, mixed martial arts for a few years, but never took that as seriously. Uh, and really only ever did training and, you know, some occasional sparring and so on. When I was about 20 years old, uh, I severely injured my, my right shoulder, which resulted in a severe labral tear. Over the following years during uh, MMA and ice hockey incidents, I experienced repeated dislocations. So at one point I decided to approach a surgeon who put me on a one-year public wait list and encouraged me to take up weightlifting to strengthen the muscle around the damaged shoulder. So right here, I'm just putting an image up. This is uh, this this actually took me to the best physique I ever had uh, at about 24 to 25 years of age, which was about five or six years ago. By the time my opportunity came up for the surgery with the public system, the surgeon actually advised against it and said that I was back to about 95% healed, and the muscle that I developed would act as a safety to prevent accidental dislocation. However, this ordeal actually left me with a winged scapula, which was never really diagnosed and only really discovered more recently. So here's a brief video. It was taken at the physiotherapist's office and you can see that scapula just winging on the right hand side there. Okay. So how did the brachial neuritis occur? Um, so as far as, so, for as long as I can recall, when I overdo it with a sh seated shoulder press, I would get this pinched nerve in my right trap, you know, and for some reason, it's only ever when I use a machine, okay, so a machine um, press that it seems to happen. I could always go crazy with a barbell lift, you know, doing sort of three reps to failure with a huge amount of weight on the barbell, and I would never have an issue, but for some reason, every now and then, it was the machine. Um, that would trigger this pinched nerve in the neck and trap region on the right hand side. So this actually happened to me about two months ago while I was traveling for work in South Africa before I had started um, experiencing the symptoms of the brachial neuritis or the Parsonage-Turner syndrome. And 
uh, when I got back to Australia, I actually had a few credits with my healthcare policy and I decided to try and find the root cause for this repeated pinched nerve that I kept getting. So this is when I first approached my first physiotherapist and he showed me that video of the winged scapula that we saw just a few moments ago and pointed out that the trap was live, likely to be overcompensating for the weak muscles around that winging scapula. So it was basically the wing muscle, the, sorry, basically the weak muscles around that uh, scapula were not contributing during the shoulder press and therefore I would feel as though I had a pinched nerve because my trap was overcompensating. On the second session with that first physiotherapist, he decided to give me trigger point therapy, which I had done a few times before for various uh, sporting related injuries and different uh, incidents. However, on this particular occasion, it just didn't feel right and the pressure he applied felt completely wrong. I mentioned that I was experiencing unusual pain and he assured me that it was normal and tried to explain that it was just trigger point um, therapy doing what it does. I, I didn't quite buy it, but I let him continue. The next day I was barely able to walk and I called the physiotherapist trying to get an emergency appointment and describe the pain I had and that I literally was really struggling to walk. Uh, the earliest he would see me was actually the scheduled return appointment, which wasn't for another 12 days. So out of desperation, I went to a chiropractor as the, the the pain actually felt very skeletal, so the chiropractor immediately identified that my first rib, which sits just under the collarbone here, uh, he said it was completely dislocated and was likely done by that first physiotherapist during what he was calling his trigger point therapy. Along with my hips, uh, he found just a few places that I've been dislocated and were probably causing me to be almost unable to work, uh, sorry, unable to walk. So. After just a single adjustment, I was immediately mobile again and the pain was now isolated just to my shoulder area. And it was that sharp shooting pain that really is described as one of the symptoms of the brachial neuritis. So basically I went to see the chiropractor a few days later who had previously worked as a myotherapist before he became a chiropractor and he didn't want to treat me as he actually believed the issue to be neural and not mechanical and chiropractors deal with mechanical and not the neural. So this was very interesting because normally a chiropractor would just want to snap your, snap your back out and take payment and sort of see you on your way. So I, I gained a lot of trust with this guy and he just spent some time talking to me about the issues and he sort of went, look, this, this is really pointing towards a neural condition and not something that a chiropractor should be helping you out with. So after about five days of constant pain, that shooting pain that really is described in all of the brachial neuritis literature that I've read. Um, a friend of mine and I were discussing it and he recommended uh, another physiotherapist who actually plays on an opposing ice hockey team. And this guy has a reputation for being an excellent physiotherapist. So I thought, yep, I'm gonna give it a go. So by the time I got to the second and my current physiotherapist, the shooting pain had stopped and it had been about two weeks since the ordeal began. By this time I'd also noticed muscle weakness starting to occur. Okay, so after explaining my symptoms, um, you know, and, and I should point out, the thing that I noticed the most was that I was completely unable to flex my, my right pec, and that was the most noticeable thing. I just couldn't flex it, could barely do a push-up, um, so I, I showed him this weakness and I said, this is bizarre, you know? So after explaining the symptoms to him, he started working with me and obviously suggested that the diagnosis could be um, mainly done by a neurospecialist. However, it was unlikely to be anything else other than the Parsonage Turner syndrome or the brachial neuritis, um, simply due to what we were seeing and you know the, the symptoms that I was describing. Um, the second time I went to see him, I actually had noticed that that atrophy and that was when we were quite certain that this was you know Parsonage Turner syndrome or brachial neuritis uh, you know and they, they are meant to be the same thing just uh, named differently so the physiotherapist found it quite concerning that I already had the winged scapula before the brachial neuritis, neuritis had started because 
a winked scapula is often a side effect or a, um, you know, a consequence of brachial neuritis or, or Parsonage Turner syndrome. So my current physiotherapist um, and I have decided there are three likely factors which have probably contributed to this case of brachial neuritis. And one being the previous injury to my shoulder and the degrading of the supporting muscles in and around my shoulder area over time, particularly those which are the stabilizing muscles, you know, they don't get worked out in the same way as strength muscles. So although I had strengthened my body and I'd, you know, really taken on a different type of physique and a lot of strength, um, I wasn't getting the supporting muscles, you know, your scapula, your lower lats to really uh, get involved with those exercises. And, and that had caused, um, you know, the, the winging of the scapula. So the second thing was the trauma that had occur occurred during the trigger point therapy, you know, um, that I say, because it just, I don't think it was the right thing. And we've decided that basically he, he's caused some serious trauma might have triggered a, a dislocation of one of the bones during this therapy. Um, and we put that down to a, a recent trauma situation. The final area and the third contributing factor, uh, and this is a big one actually, is stress. So um, brachial neuritis is sometimes described as an autoimmune disease. And over the last few years, my job has been increasingly stressful and I've had various autoimmune issues affect me, including, um, you know, mild psoriasis, and that's like drying of the skin, sort of particularly under the hair areas. I don't, I don't really suffer from it too badly today. And uh, during one particularly stressful period, I also experienced something called alopecia areata. Here I've got a picture of the back of my head, and this was, this was really concerning because I thought I was going uh, bald, with male pattern baldness at an incredibly rapid pace. Um, but it was actually remained just isolated to that one area and nowadays you can you can sort of see it's it's completely recovered um, So that that was a big scare for me um, So this is this actually happened during a period where I was not doing a lot of exercise and since then I've actually been using exercise to try and help manage my stress and it's it's evident that this is working because um, Basically, I, I haven't had a lot of the, well, I have not had no alopecia outbreaks since, and I've had very limited uh, psoriasis, particularly for the last eight months, while I've been keeping a very regular gym routine. So guys, if there's one thing I can recommend to anybody, uh, you've got to try and get hold of your stress levels. It can take years off your life, and it can cause a whole bunch of nasty, nasty things, autoimmune conditions, all sorts of stuff to happen to your body. You know, a lot of it can be resolved, but you know, some, some of it possibly can't. So really, if I can, if I can suggest one thing, try and manage your stress and working out, exercising, it's really a great way. You know, I, I find when I work out, um, when I've got complicated things that I've got to solve at work, I, I sort of like blank in my mind while I'm exercising, you know, and often it's like mid, mid press or mid, you know, some lift. And I'm, and I'm just exerting a hell of a lot of effort and suddenly I'll go, oh, I've solved that issue. So it's, it's really quite a great way to help with stress, to help with just keeping your mind clear and all those sorts of things. So what am I doing to help recover? Um, so the, the focus has been two major areas. Firstly, my physiotherapist and I, we've decided, well, I've, I've decided mainly due to cost, um, to see a neurosurgeon or a neurospecialist that we've pretty much decided it, it can't be too much other than brachial neuritis. Because of the symptoms, uh, all the literature we've read online, um, every, everything that we've got in the way of pharmaceutical documentation and biological documentation suggests that the, the types of things, particularly the intense pain into that arm shoulder period, followed by weakness and then rapid muscle atrophy really isolates it to the, the brachial neurisis. Um, and the issue is if I go to a, um, a neurospecialist and they do actually diagnose it, 
the the outcome and what they recommend is just physiotherapy so we're sort of bypassing that i'm going to give it some time if i don't see recovery having the physiotherapy treatment as though it's brachial neuritis maybe i'll have to go and invest in a, a proper diagnosis from a neuro guy but until then i'm certainly going to treat it as though it's brachial neuritis so again we're focusing my physiotherapist and i on two major areas firstly the physiotherapy treatment on the shoulder area which often includes trigger point therapy um, but again I trust this guy a lot more than the first guy that I saw um, I should point out that my current physiotherapist seems to hurt me in a very familiar way and it feels effective unlike that first treatment that I had which uh, I don't even know how to describe it it felt like it was trying to manipulate my bones um, at the time and not the muscle um, so I, I'm very comfortable with him Every time I go and see him, I feel a little bit stronger. And what I do notice is that I can actually get more flexion out of my pec muscle, which is the, the main thing that I can, I can visibly see uh, flexing. Um, and a little bit more, although I would say my, my tricep seems to be the one lagging the most in, in the recovery process. So this might be uh, mainly in my head, but you know sometimes things that are in your head are just as relevant, you know? So the other massive area that my physiotherapist and I are focusing on is something that he would anyway, and that is trying to repair and maintain the muscles causing, causing the winged scapula. So it's very unusual that I had the winged scapula before the brachial neuritis, and there's definitely a correlation between the two and maybe why I am now suffering from the brachial neuritis. However, it's common for winged scapula to occur in people who have brachial neuritis and didn't previously have the winged scapula. So what I'm going to demonstrate now um, is just two exercises that I'm currently performing, which I am assured will evolve a bit more in time. Um, and there's a very strong focus on the posture during these movements. I'm trying not to use power muscles because it's very easy to just power through this, but focus on having great form and using and engaging those stabilizing muscles. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna demonstrate them quickly, and I'll take my shirt off just so you can sort of see the posture that I'm trying that I'm trying to keep here. So the first one, I'm getting a rubber band. I'm just hooking it slightly underneath the scapula in the back, and I'm trying to get the angle to about a 30 degree angle away from my body. And I'm simply tucking in and pushing out, okay? And the idea is to keep my back sort of almost flexed and use my abs where possible to keep my body straight. Instead of doing that traditional power sort of push, I'm really trying to keep my abs as the, um, the engaging and stabilizing muscles, which naturally occurs for the um, scapular uh, engaging muscles to be engaged in the process. Okay, so I'm encouraged to do two sets of those, about 20 each time. Now the other one's going to be a little trickier for me to show um, on the webcam, simply because I don't have a door around, but typically I tie this knot here into a door, and then I would actually simply be using, again, an outward movement, like so, which is going to engage that scapula on the right side there, and just all the supporting muscles to ensure that I'm doing as, as good a job as possible in keeping um, yeah, my support and my shape in frame, which will engage the, uh, the serratus, um, which is the main muscle that's suspected to be causing this. This one other thing that I've been advised to do, it's more something I've read. My current physiotherapist would say that I'm probably not ready for it yet, and he'd want to sort of uh, help me to get to that phase slowly. Um, and that is what we call scorpions, and that engages the lower lat quite a bit, which neither of these two exercises I just demonstrated engage. And from the very first video where you showed the, where I showed the wing scapula, you can actually see that there's a bit of muscle from my lower back missing on the right hand side, and that's that's the lower lat. It's just it's more of a stabilizing muscle. It is also kind of a power muscle, but it's it's much weaker on the right hand side. So I suspect very shortly I'm going to be start starting to 
um, engage more of those type of exercises, the lower lat strengthening exercises. So anyway, hopefully that gives everybody a bit of an understanding about how the brachial neuritis has been for me, uh, what I'm trying to work through. I will make an effort to update as my exercises given to me by the physiotherapist evolve and I'll show you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And of course, you know, those weekly updates, which I'm going to have just immediately after this, uh, this session is uh, going to show how many push-ups I can do, which I'm using as a real measurement of my progression. Now, I did mention in the last video, I, I have a suspicion that that's not going to remain a good uh, demonstration of my progression for very long because I do notice that my, my pecs seem to be healing at a more rapid pace than my tricep. And my tricep doesn't seem to have shown any signs of improvement yet. While my pec, I can feel it flexing harder each time. And of course, during push-ups, you're engaging your pecs quite a bit. So as we progress, if I start hitting my milestone, which is 50 push-ups in a single set, I might have to then cut across to a tricep isolation exercise to show the, the actual progress of just the tricep. Because again, I suspect that's something that's lagging a bit behind. Anyway, I'm now going to shoot um, the, the push-up update. So thanks a lot for watching and please do subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. I'm, I'm happy to just engage with people, try and, try and collaborate a little bit, see what's working for some, not working for others. You know, if I, if I do see things that are not working for me, I'm gonna be very open and honest about it. There's certain things that I see are just awesome and I'm killing it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to let you know that these have been particularly useful for me. So thanks a lot for watching and just following this is a push-up update for this week.